Hi everybody, welcome back to Environmental Organic Chemistry with Dr. Lisa. We're going to continue with our discussions about desorption, talking about the desorption of neutral organics to particulate organic matter. So, you know, we spend a lot of time on neutral organics, partly because they are, you know, many of the chemicals that we care about the environment are neutral organic chemicals. If you look at Superfund sites across the country, you find that the top contaminants are PCBs, dioxins, PAHs, all of these are neutral organics. Maybe fuel components like BTEX, all of these are neutral organic chemicals. So this is an important topic, and we also start with it because it's easy. Uh, describing the absorption of neutral compounds to particular organic matter is more straightforward because we don't have to worry about ionic interactions and things like that. So for neutral organic uh, molecules, frequently it's the organic matter in the, in the uh, sediment or the soil that's important, right? And in fact, I have a student right now, Ali, who's working on a big project um, doing a lot of statistics because we have numbers for sand and fines and silt and organic matter and all these different parameters measured in the sediment of a couple of Superfund sites. And he's looking at how these neutral organic compounds sorb to them. And he's finding that, yes, indeed, fraction of organic carbon is the only thing that seems to really matter in terms of the absorption of neutral organic molecules. Um, so absorption to the organic matter is the dominant absorption process for most organic chemicals in most systems because, uh, you know, the, the, the minerals, which make up a, a large proportion of the mass of the sediment, well, they're just nonpolar. Excuse me, they're quite polar. Um, the, the surface of them is quite polar, and so there's no incentive for the chemical to absorb onto them. And in fact, the water molecules, because water molecules are polar, they're absorbed onto the minerals, and, and to absorb the neutral organics, you'd have to displace those water molecules, and that's tough to do. So organic matter is the dominant source of absorbent. It's the, the main absorbent. And so frequently people will measure FOC, the fraction of organic carbon in their soil or sediment or even in particles in the atmosphere, you know, whatever they're trying to, whatever particles we're talking about, they will measure the fraction of organic carbon. And, and notice that we're, we're using this term very specifically. It's the fraction of organic carbon, okay? Now, sometimes you'll see people measure the fraction of organic matter, right? The organic matter includes all the other stuff, not just the carbon, but the hydrogen, the oxygen, the nitrogen, stuff like that. And so when you measure organic matter, the, the same amount of gook, you know, is going to have... Um, more organic matter than it does organic carbon because organic carbon is just part of it. And so as a rule of thumb, we would say that the FOM is usually about twice as big as the FOC. So if you ever do have FOM and you need to convert it to FOC, you can use this. It's a rule of thumb. It's not perfect, but it, but it works okay. And even when this FOC is very, very low, so 0. 0.0000 whatever, 0001, uh, which would be 0.01%, that's still, like, for example, that would happen if you have a very sandy soil, if you're talking literally about an oil spill on a beach, right, where it's just sand. Sand has a very low organic carbon content, but even there, it's the organic material that's, that's important in absorbing or, uh, neutral organic molecules. Uh, and so the way we describe this is by reformulating our idea of what KD is. Remember, KD is the concentration sorbed over the concentration not sorbed, so CS over CW. And so we think of the concentration that sorbed now as the concentration that sorbed to the organic carbon, COC. And then we just have to multiply that by the fraction of the total mass that is organic carbon, FOC. And then we get right back to KD. So COC times FOC is equal to CS. Uh, and so this formula right here, and I will now, with the magic of my pointer, I will erase, and then I will highlight it again. This, oh, whoa, that's not what I had to do. Yeah, these pointers. Back to the pen. Okay, this formula right here is really important, and you'll probably use it a lot. Okay, so remember that formula. That's why it's in a box. Okay, so... Um, Again, we, we said that the problem with KD is that KD is not constant. It's a quote-unquote equilibrium constant, but it's not constant, right? So here's an example of this. Here's measurements of KD for two different chemicals. One is for tetrachloromethane or, or tet carbon tetrachloride, and the other is 1,2-dichlorobenzene or orthodichlorobenzene. And you can see, so first of all, the dichloromenzene has higher values of KD. It's up here. And the tetrachloromethane is down here because dichloromethane is a bigger molecule, my, you know, larger um, 
total size and therefore lower solubility, higher KOW value, uh, going to be more uh, higher, have a higher KD. But you can see that these range all over the map. You know, these triangles are all over the place and these, these dots are all over the place. But you can also see that there's a pretty, pretty roughly linear correlation between KD and the fraction of the organic carbon on the sediment. And so when people notice this, they said, aha, it must be the organic carbon that's important. Um, and so what, what follows from that is that you can take KD and divide it by FOC and get something useful which would be the slope of this line. Not, it's not a very good line, but you get the idea. Well, my pointer sucks, but you know, the slope of this line would be KOC. And this value KOC is tremendously useful. So they, they define this new thing, which they call KD divided by FOC. They call it KOC. That's the equilibrium constant for partitioning between water and organic carbon. And because of this formulation, we can rewrite that formula for the fraction of the chemical that's in the water phase. Before over here, we had KD. Now we can write this as KOC times FOC. And this equation right here is also going to prove to be a very, very important, useful equation. So make sure you, you when you do your homework and stuff, you're gonna refer back to that. You're gonna use this equation lots. That's just why it's here in red. Okay, so KOC is really great. KOC has now reduced dramatically the amount of variability in KD. But it hasn't gone away completely because you can see that there's still a lot of variability here, all the way up to here and all over the place. All right, so there's still some variability. Why? Let's think about this, okay? So this is a histogram. So this is the number of experimental values over here. And then this is the log KOC. So remember, you know, we talked about log KOW a lot. Well, now we're talking about log KOC. Same idea, it varies over many orders of magnitude. So instead of talking about absolute numbers, we talk about the log of KOC. And you notice that this is for uh, carbon tetrachloride up here. And this one is for the dichlorobenzene. So the same two chemicals we were talking about on the previous slide. And you can see that <clears throat> they measured values of KOC for a bunch of different soils and sediments and they get different values. And they're not, you know, the range is not huge, but you have to remember this is a log scale. But the other thing you notice is that it's sort of a bimodal distribution, right? So you got sort of two peaks in your distribution. And the one on the left with lower KOC values is for soils. And the one on the right with higher KOC values is for sediments. So why do sediments have higher KOC values? Well, that implies that they are more hydrophobic uh, and, and therefore less polar. And we'll talk in a moment about why that might be. But you notice you get the same thing over here for dichlorobenzene, you get a bimodal distribution. I cannot draw with this mouse, you know, it really sucks. I, I apologize. Erase, erase, boom. Okay, let's try that again. Back to the pointer. All right, let's try it. I'm gonna do this really slow. Okay, it's still terrible. Okay, bimodal distribution, there you go. Anyway. So bimodal distribution, soils and sediments giving you slightly different values for KOC. So one of the take home messages is you can go to the literature and you can find a value of KOC. In fact, you can go on EpiWin and you can find a value of KOC. But you should think about it a little bit. It's not like KOW where there's one true correct value out there. KOC can vary because the type of organic carbon in these soils and sediments varies. So not surprising that it would vary a little bit. And the other take home message is that if you are working in a sediment, you might want to not choose a KOC value that came from soil, you know, choose a KOC value that came from sediment. <clears throat> so normalizing your KD value to FOC in order to calculate a KOC value reduces, but does not eliminate the overall variability. So the type of organic carbon does matter. It doesn't matter hugely because, you know, again, this is a fairly tight range. Okay. <clears throat> but it does matter some. And the terrestrial carbon, meaning the soil carbon, seems to be more polar than the sediment carbon, the, the aquatic carbon. <clears throat> so here's a, a, a similar sort of uh, histogram. This is for atrazine, which is a much more polar compound. So you can see our log KOC is down here around two and a half, two, two and a half. Um, and the point is that, you know, if you go into the literature, you might find a value here and you might find a value here uh, and you might find a value over here. And so, you know, picking one value for KOC, eh, it, it tends to be accurate within about 0.3 log units because, you know, if you think the centroid here is 2.1, 
and you know maybe this is maybe about 0.4 log units but if you pick sort of a central value here you're going to be right within about a factor of two a factor of two is 0.3 log units so you know that's as good as you're going to do now in reality you know a factor of two is not bad for environmental work right it's i mean you know we're dealing with complex systems a factor of two eh, it's okay we can live with a factor of two so that is a primer on koc and then in the next lecture, we're going to start to talk about what exactly is organic carbon in soils and sediments. Where does it come from? What are its properties? We're going to talk about that in the next lecture. So I will see you on the other side.